Good day, fellow investors. Welcome to the stock market news with a long-term investment focus. And in this video, I want to put an all-weather perspective. What is the all-weather environment we are in so that you can start thinking about finding an answer on how to invest over the next 10 years. What's already priced in, what is not, and where you can find opportunities. If we look at the news, if you look at the news, it's all about short-term news, politics, politics, vaccines, uh, how startup investments fell just 13% in the first half of the year. So all news is short-term. But in order to know about what to do, you need to have a big picture perspective on things. And therefore, we're going to discuss what's all weather, what's the current situation, What's the likely long-term outlook when it comes to what's going on? What are the long-term fundamentals of the economy of investing? And then discuss also investment conclusions. Before we start, just one request. And first, a thank you for all of you that have subscribed to this channel. We are reaching 100,000. And to thank you, I want to introduce something new. Each Tuesday, I want to talk about the stock that you request. So please let me know in the comments. I'll have my 16-year-old brother systematize all the requests, make a top list, and then do one video per video on what you want to see, what you want to have me analyze from a fundamental value investing perspective. So please comment which stocks you want me to make an analysis here on the channel each Tuesday. Thank you for that. Also subscribe to the channel, click that like button, and let's start with the long-term news. So we have four environments that describe the four seasons that can hit an economy and then consequently investing. So we have an environment with higher than expected economic growth, an environment with higher than expected inflation, lower than expected economic growth, and lower than expected inflation. Then we have, okay, how to invest, higher economic growth than expected, stocks, corporate bonds, commodities, also gold, lower than expected economic growth, we have treasury bonds, tips, inflation-linked bonds, higher than expected inflation, commodities, gold, lower than expected inflation, treasuries, bonds, and stocks. So in what kind of environment are we investing now? That's the first question we have to answer. And here comes the tricky part. I would say that we are both in an inflationary environment, so higher than expected inflation, and also lower than expected inflation, plus lower than expected economic growth. That's a given. So let me first explain why I see that as a combination of both higher and lower inflation. All the things you need in life increase in price pretty much, all the things you don't need in life go down in price. Therefore, inflation is a st statistical average and you have to see how those parameters diverge. Let's start with that and then we'll discuss the economy and then how to invest. And perhaps I'll add a fifth season to the all-weather portfolio, something that even Ray Dalio has omitted because this what's going on now was really, really hard to predict eight months ago. So let's say higher than expected inflation. Now you'll say, Sven, how can you say higher than expected inflation when inflation is between zero and one percent over the last 10 years has been lower than the two percent that all the monetary policies are targeting? What are you drinking, Sven, you might ask? Well, also in Europe, inflation rate over the last 20 years went from even 8% down below 4 and it has been constantly, let's say, below 2% since the financial crisis, below the target of 2%. So how can I say higher than expected inflation? As I said, inflation is just a statistical average and I would argue that we have both inflation higher and lower than expected. Let me explain. If you look at healthcare costs compared to GDP in the United States, those were 5% in 1962, those are now 20%. Do you need healthcare? Yes, therefore, healthcare costs increase at a faster pace than the statistical average. Also, if you want to buy real estate, real estate prices increased 3.3% per year over the last uh, three decades in the United States. That's, again, especially in the last years, higher than 
inflation. So you need real estate, you want to buy something, you have to pay more. Thus, inflation is higher than expected. Also, let's go for education, also something that you need. And if we look at tuition prices, on that's just one part of education, how much it costs. You also need to pay rent and everything else, books and etc. etc. Also, prices are increasing at a faster pace than what inflation would say. And perhaps the most important thing from an investing perspective are retirement costs. We are investing now, we are giving away our cash now to have more cash in the future, to retire, to be financially independent, to be free. And that cost, there has been huge inflation, financial asset inflation. 30 years ago, if you had a million dollars, a million dollars, you put it in 10 year US Treasury bonds, you would get $140,000 per year, 35 years ago. Then the interest rates on the 10 year bond went down, 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 down. And from $140,000, you would, you get, what you get now is $6,807,000. So 5% of what those that invested in 10 year treasuries got 25, 35 years ago. So if you want to retire, you need for the same amount, you need $20 million now. And that's for me inflation higher than expected because yes i want to retire i want to invest i want to save for my retirement and the cost of that has skyrocketed so from one perspective investment perspective i would say that inflation has been and has stayed higher than expected on the other hand all the stupid things you don't need in life fast fashion look at the apparel prices over the last 30 years they, those have been declining most years over the last 30 years. You don't need fast fashion, you don't need constantly new shirts, new this, new that. You can go longer with the same suits as I do and you're more sustainable and you save a lot of money. But they want you to spend more with lower and lower prices based on globalization, lower wages, etc, etc. Another thing, a burger at McDonald's, 75 cents in 1990, today $1, so much less than inflation. And I think you can buy a burger also in Europe for one euro, so we are there. Of course, the size of the burgers changed, but the prices went actually down because I don't know how much real food is in something like this. Again, something that you sh don't really need in life, and even better if you avoid it. So on one hand, we have inflation in those things that we really need and deflation in those things that are exposed to technology. Technology has really been a deflationary force over the last 30 years from internet, from communication, from whatever. Technology lowered cost, globalization. You can have your shirts produced in Cambodia, Bangladesh, very low wages. So that's also an inflationary force that has hopefully come to a limit as more and more people protest there for fair living wages, which is very important. And then also something that's very deflationary is debt. The amount of debt globally has skyrocketed to trillions, trillions and trillions with lower and lower interest rates, which allows for more and more investments. So investments, more competition, lower prices, lower is the return on investment needed to do something. And therefore, that's also a deflationary force. So we have two divergent forces in the environment. So I would say that we are both in an inflationary and in a deflationary environment. Just depends on what you are looking at. From an economic perspective, there's not much to discuss there. <laughs> economic growth below expected with quarterly economic GDP declines to 30%, which is bigger than what it was the case in the Great Depression, especially in such a short period of time. Same situation in Europe on a yearly basis, GDP declines around 10, 11%. But there is something else with the economy. We have massive fiscal stimulus, massive monetary stimulus, lower and lower interest rates, an abundance on liquidity 
globally uh, that has skyrocketed and everybody is willing to take any yield to invest, which really distorts also the all weather environment, but is, let's say, a fifth all weather situation that one has to think about and cope with. The repercussions will be felt for years and we'll see how will that be dealt with because the debasement of the currency is like a likely reason and keep in mind both inflation sides, deflation and inflation depending on where you look at is something very peculiar of this environment. It's always different it resembles history, but it's usually always different. Given the monetary policy, one could argue that there will be inflation as at some point this monetary and fiscal policy will hit the wall when it has to become inflationary in all fields. But for now, we are still here and we don't know when this will turn into a complete inflationary environment with lower than expected economic growth. If we go to normal rate dalio, then we should invest in treasury bonds, inflation-linked inflation bonds, commodities, gold, so protect yourself against inflation in a falling economic environment. But we also see stocks going up, corporate bonds doing well because of the liquidity. So we can say that the monetary and fiscal policy stimulus, the financial engineering, is really distorting what would one call an all-weather portfolio. So we must also think in a different way. We must to implement, we must implement the financial engineering and abundance of money into these quadrants. And then when we look at things, we have to see, okay, what's already priced in? If we look at gold, it was when we spoke a lot about gold miners on this channel two years ago, gold was at 1,000, 1,200. Now it's surpassed 2,000, a little bit lower. But this is perhaps something that already priced in all the developments we have now discussed. So it becomes a risky thing. It's not that we are investing in gold at bottom prices close to cost production cost investment costs all sustaining all in sustaining costs now it's a different story a much more riskier story also long term bonds okay at 3% when interest rates go down like it has been the case over the last year then you can get protection but What's more likely now that interest rates will go up due to inflation or down so that your real returns are negative? Also, we have seen at some point this trend of constantly declining interest rates has to end, hit the wall, and we have to see inflationary forces. So again, my question is, and something for you to think about, is how much of this is already priced in? How much of Ray Dalio's quadrants and protection assets because everything happened so fast over the last few months. Also stocks crashing in panic when the world was about to end on the 20th of March but since then almost doubled and higher than previous level. Really really interesting how the money flows work and affect financial asset prices, inflation, especially your pension costs. So my conclusion would be that we have to find value where we can find it. So if you look at investments, you have to really try to think about the risk and reward. If you look at electrical vehicles, think about, okay, what's the risk and reward of this investment and how does that fit my needs? I think really we have to put a personal perspective to whatever we do and see, okay, how does this this investment, this bet at this moment in time fit my needs. Over the long term, due to the debt, we might see inflation, continuing inflation, and then we have to compare that to, okay, how much is already priced in due to exuberance because financial markets always anticipate what will, what is expected to happen. So always look for value, be it miners. We'll discuss miners over the next few months as I have a lot of requests to do so. For now, I have been analyzing the Austrian stock market. A lot of interesting uh, businesses there, not exuberantly priced as some other more famous things. 
And if you go on my blog, you can also subscribe to my free investing course and newsletter. But, but if you go on to my blog, and you can see here all the articles that I do on smaller companies, and you really can find value there. It's companies that are not priced uh, properly or not so exuberantly priced. So I have made an Austrian stock market list. This is what I'm doing. And you can see here over the last month i made a lot of analysis and some interesting things emerge so this is what i do i try to find investments that fit my requirements my long-term investments let's say targets what i want to do depending also on the risk and reward it's a crazy environment out there there is not a clear rule you have to stick to this stick to that but see how each investment, each potential investment that you are looking at fits your portfolio, fits your requirements and think about, okay, what's the risk, what's the reward and what's the protection or what's the upside when I put it in the all weather environment, which is likely to be long term inflationary and long term economic growth lower than expected. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to this channel and we'll, as we'll keep digging into what's going on, how to behave over the next decades. And this is what we do. Thank you. Looking forward to your comments. Don't forget to tell me which stock do you want me to analyze. And I'll see you in the next video.